Welcome to Long Road Miniatures. Recently I've been working on a slightly different Sylvanath army. You know already of the horror of Blackwood as I've discussed how I built that on this channel and I'd originally intended for there to be a video showing how I painted it. Unfortunately I lost the footage for that which was not the best day I've had. But, I have had time since doing the horror to experiment a little bit with the method that I used and the amount of paints and the layers that I've used to get the kind of wood effect on these undead nightmare Sylvanath horror shows. And with the creation of the Little Walker, which is a Blood Bowl tree man that has been somewhat messed with to make it look a little more sinister and a little more in keeping with the overall look of this Sylvanath force, I thought this would be a good secondary opportunity to go over how I'm doing the wood for this army. Now as with a lot of the stuff that I paint, this is actually really, really simple. I enjoy painting a lot more than I did and I feel like I am getting steadily better at it, but I also, I also like my shortcuts if you want to call them that, and this to me feels like something of a shortcut to getting a nice wood effect without spending a vast amount of time on it. The secret, as with so many other things that I paint, is dry brushing. That is my go-to method for 90% of things, for better or worse, and for this particular kind of texture, this particular kind of look, dry brushing is easily the most simple but effective way to go. Now for this I just used one brush, it's a large Artist Opus Series D dry brush. These are the brushes I use the most out of all of the brushes I have, although then again I also use Artist Opus S Series as well, so they take up a good 90% of the brushes I use. For the wood, not just on this particular model, but the entirety of my Sylvanath, I'm using just three colours, dry brushed up from darkest to lightest. Starting with Citadel's Rhinox Hide, moving up to Army Painter's Leather Brown, and then Vallejo's Ice Yellow. To start with, I'm not at all careful with how I apply the Rhinox Hide, in fact, I even do the cardinal sin, which is dipping the dry brush straight into the top of the bottle, which is not normally recommended. I would suggest that, generally speaking, you want to put some paint on your texture palette, not just stick the brush into the lid of the pot. But in this particular instance, it doesn't really matter if I get a bit too much on the brush, because I want a really good amount of coverage off this. I want it to go into the cracks in some areas, but stay out of the cracks in others. I want it to be a fairly inconsistent coat going on top of the black base coat. Once the entire model's covered, then I just move up to the leather brown. Now with this, I have put a bit of paint on the texture palette, and I also recommend getting most of it off from this point on. It doesn't matter if you're a bit heavy-handed with the previous layer, because that's kind of the base for everything else that's going to be put on here. From this point on, a bit more care and attention is kind of needed, but you can still be fairly rough with it. The nice thing about this method, and the nice thing about dry brushing in this way in general, is that you can adapt it as much as you like. I mean, I've gone up to a certain level of lightness with the brown on these models, but if you wanted it to be darker, you could simply mix a bit less of the leather brown into the Rhinox hide, or vice versa. If you ever want to go back a step and make it darker, then you can do. If you ever want to go really light, then you could change up the ice yellow for a white of some kind, possibly. If you wanted to do more of a, a grey bark, then you can use exactly the same steps, and you can use exactly the same principle, and you will wind up with a fairly solid result, no matter what you do. Without cleaning the brush, I've just worked up the leather brown from the Rhinox hide, making sure that the bits I want to be nice and light do have a bit more lightness to them, avoiding the areas that I want to be a little bit more dark. Also use the texture palette and the back of my hand to test the colour that's coming out of the brush, probably not as often as I should have done, but I was enjoying myself and just kind of feeling the flow of it. 
Once I got it to a shade that I was happy with, I moved on to the Ice Yellow. Now this is one of my favourite paints because it feels like it can lift pretty much any other colour just that little bit higher. Again, without cleaning the brush, I've simply put a bit of Ice Yellow on the texture palette and just worked it into the existing brown. The more I use the dry brush, the more of the brown works out and the more of the ice yellow works in until eventually you just get a nice highlight colour that isn't completely yellow. It's still a little darker than that, but it does give a nice finish to the wood. It just lifts it that little bit, highlighting the most raised areas but leaving it going back down into that Rhinox hide in the deepest places. Again, if necessary, you can go back and you can make things darker if you feel you've gone too far. If you want to make things even lighter, that is also an option. Although if you're doing that, I would suggest trying to preserve as much of the brown as possible in the darker areas. And after a couple of finishing touches, the little walker is done. The total time to paint this model was around 20 minutes, which I don't think is too bad for the size of it, and I think the finish has come out okay given the time spent. Of course, you can further bring stuff out by applying a wash if you want to. Things like the skulls in the mouths could be highlighted slightly more. The leaves at the top of the tree could also be given a bit more detail. But around 20 minutes from a base coated black to a finished and based happy little tree nightmare is not too bad. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any tips or hints of your own in terms of painting wood or painting Sylvanith in particular, then do leave them in the comments. This is my first journey into painting this sort of army, so I'm pretty much making it up as I go along. But I'm applying my usual thinking of at least hoping that things don't need to be overly complicated for them to look okay. Thank you very much for joining me on this leg of the journey and hopefully I will see you next time.